This year I have the pleasure of presenting the preliminary results from Keynote 055. This is a study of pembrolizumab, uh, the PD-1 antibody, uh, for treatment of recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer that is refractory or resistant to both platinum and cetuximab. And what have been the process of patient selection going forwards after they've already failed with the platinum and cetuximab? Right, so in the modern era, there's actually no active therapies for patients who fail both platinum and cetuximab. The usual historical reference population is methotrexate. Methotrexate has a response rate of about 5%, and patients have a median overall survival of six months. So this is a pa patient population with significant needs. Um, and there's reason to think that pembrolizumab would be active here because both PDL1 and PDL2 are upregulated in um, head and neck cancer. It's not often we hear about PDL2. Right, so it's another ligand for PD1. As part of the whole keynote overview of trials, how is this feeding into information? So this is, I mean, it's, it's a very exciting trial because this is a space, as I said, where there's no real options. There's actually never been a trial, to my knowledge, in this spot. Most trials will say, oh, you can't have received cetuximab or whatever, but this is really taking the sickest of the sick. Um, and we saw some really exciting results. Can you tell us more about those? Yeah, so um, we presented the 92 patients who had at least six months of follow-up, um, and there was around a 17% response rate. Um, that was all partial responses. But keep in mind, PD-1 agents can have responses that happen after six months. So it is fully possible, you know, we'll have to watch more and see where we are. Um, and we also, in addition to that, saw about 17 or 18 percent of stable disease. So there was a large amount of clinical benefit for these patients. And with the ongoing patient surveillance in mind for this cohort, are there any plans to expand beyond the original 98 patients? So we've actually enrolled 172 patients and 171 have been treated. Uh, at ASCO this year, we're just presenting the first uh, 92 who have at least six months of follow-up because we're only presenting confirmed responses here. So the, pay, the investigator assessed response rate may actually be higher, but we're presenting confirmed response using the most rigorous fashion with independent radiologic review. And just to check for the proportion of patients who have, say, head and neck cancer going through the treatment cycle, getting the platinum, getting all the treatments so far, how many of those patients would be eligible for further trials with Keynote 55? So uh, if a patient has recurrent or metastatic disease, they will likely go on to need uh, further treatments because it's not, it's unfortunately incurable. So if they're starting with platinum, if they had platinum, which they were resistant to in the uh, locally advanced setting, then we can't give them that again. We have cetuximab, and then we really have very limited options there. So there's a big population who stand to benefit from these results. With that big population in mind, how would you see this being escalated out from the enrollment so far up to the next few phases of trials? So there are ongoing phase three trials that are comparing pembrolizumab uh, with or uh, against or in combination with cytotoxic chemotherapy. Um, and those are Keynote 040 and Keynote 048. Uh, and those are ongoing and currently accruing. Checkpoint combinations seem to be very much um, the treatment du jour. Mm -hmm. The idea of being able to kill and limit cancer growth how would you see that moving forwards as a broader application in the field? Well, I think that within head and neck cancer, at least, it's a great opportunity because many patients with head and neck cancer, for instance, have a virally mediated cancer, for instance, human papillomavirus or Epstein-Barr virus. So the concept of combining a checkpoint inhibitor with perhaps a therapy targeting um, a viral antigen, that's a really exciting next step. And also doing this in a logical, scientific fashion, saying we know that these are the markers that are found in head and neck cancer, and and structuring a, tr a trial around that, combining what we know with what we wish to know.